In the last couple of videos, we covered the eye in more detail, uh, specifically the human eye. In this video, we're going to talk about different types of eyes, which includes the primate eye or a mammalian eye, an insect eye, and an eye of a worm as well. Now, first, we're going to start with the primate eye. A primate, remember, is just, for example, a chimp, a baboon, a um, orang utan, or a gibbon. Those would be primates, so they would be quite related to us. Uh, the primate eye looks very similar. It's basically just like our eye, which is important to know, right? So primate eye would be the eye of chimps, as one example, and it would look quite similar. It would have the same refractive media that we have, and remember the refractive media were the parts of the eye that bend light, that the cornea, the aqueous humor, lens, and the vitreous humor. Right? Remember those four are the ones who are the bending, responsible for the bending of light. Then they have a retina, like we have. So the, these four were the, for these main four parts were the refractive media. And the retina is that back of the eye, that thin membrane. It has a similar structure. So this is the retina here. And it has these ganglial and other types of neurons beforehand. And then it will have the cones and rods at the back, just like our eye does. And in this case, the rods and cones, they have millions of them, just like we have. We've got millions of rods and cones all over our eye. And they have trichromatic vision. Now, tri means three. You can see it has red, green, and blue, just like us. We have three cones, red, green, and blue. So trichromatic, chromatic means color. So they have color vision, and they have three cones to give them that color vision. And that's for all, most, all, basically all primates. And primates are mammals. So the reason why I mention all this is because the dot point says students will process and analyze information from secondary sources to compare and describe the nature and the function of photoreceptor cells in mammals, insects, and other animals. So here I've compared a, the primate eye, which is an example of a mammal, and I'm com going to compare them to an insect and a worm. But one more important thing before we go to the insect and worm. These were, in, these were the primates, right? So it's a couple of examples. Orangutan, the lemur, the gibbon, and the chimp. But, so these are mammals, right? The primates are mammals. But this, most mammals actually don't have trichromatic vision. They have dichromatic. They might not, they might be missing one of the actual receptors. In many cases, they might be missing the red receptor, for example. So they might only have green and blue. So they have dichromatic vision. And so not all mammals have trichromatic. It's mostly primates and us. Whereas, most other mammals will have this kind of vision. All right, so if you choose a different mammal, remember not all mammals have exactly the same rods and cones or the same cones as we have. There might be slight differences. But primates and us have that trichromatic vision and the eye structure will be quite similar. All right, so the planarian, which is the other that I cover because Dopoin says talk about mammals, insects, and uh, and one other animal. So the one other animal is the planarian, which is more or less just a worm. It's, it's a worm. And you can see that from the picture right here. Now its eye is very simple. So it's going to got one of the most simplest eye you can get. And it's called an ocelli. So the eyes would be right there. And it's called an ocelli. So what happens here is light comes in this way. It goes through these photoreceptors, which are these ones. These are the photoreceptor neurons and hits the pigment, which is at the bottom of that photoreceptor. Right. So there's a couple of things that you should know about the planarian eye. First of all, that's really, really simple. And basically all it does is it can detect light. Right? So there's no actual image. All it sees is light on, light off. So you can imagine like when you close your eyes, for example, and you're in the dark, if someone switches on the light, you can sense the light has been switched on, right? You can tell the light is on, but you see no image because your, your eyes are closed. That's how a planarian sees the world. It sees either light being on or light being off, but it can also actually be able to tell where the light is coming from as well. So it can detect light, but it can tell where the light is coming from as well. All right, so that's all it does. It sees light or it sees no light, but it has no image. Um, and because of that, it has to also has little to no refractive media. Remember that was the cornea, the lens, the aqueous and vitreous humor. I say little because there's a bit of humor, there's a bit of liquid around to allow a bit of bending to make sure it hits that area.
but no precise bending because it doesn't have to be that precise because it doesn't make any clear image. Right? Comparing, so compare means we need to show similarities and differences. So that's difference to the mammalian eye, for example. It has little to no refractive media and it does not show in any image, whereas the mammalian eye does. And it also has no color vision, which kind of makes sense. Think about if you close your eyes and someone switches on the light, do you all of a sudden see different types of colors coming from all over the place? Probably not. I mean, you just see, you just see like, in, like light being on. You can feel the light on or you can feel the light off. You wouldn't know what colors they are. And that's also how a planarian sees the world as well. Right, so these are some of the examples of the O'Kelly, which is the eye of a planarian. And these are some of the features of them. So they can detect light, but they see no image. They have little to no refractive media, so they can't really bend light too well and focus on one spot. And they've got no color vision. All right, so that's the one eye. The other one we have to compare is we have to look at an insect eye. I've chosen the fly eye because that's, I mean, that's, one thing I want to also show, say is that these two images here, this one and this one, have come from this book, the Heinemann Biology book. It's just to give credit where credit is due. It's a Heinemann Biology book, that one. Um, but this eye is shaped a bit different to the human and the mammalian eye as well. So it's called a compound eye. And the reason why it's called a compound eye is because you can see, I'm sure most of you have seen a fly eye, it has these little sections. That's one, but it's got lots of them. So it's got a lot of these all over the place. So compound just means basically more than one. If anyone's done chemistry, a compound is more than one different type of element. A compound eye means there's almost one more than one eye in, in a single eye. So the eye itself is made up, made up of lots of different eyes. Um, and what exactly they're made up of is they're called omatidiums. Omatidium is just this functional unit, so this would be one omatidium. So each of these circles here would be one omatidium. Right? So one actual eye is made up of roughly, this means this here means roughly, roughly 10,000 omatidium, which is why it's called a compound eye. So it's made up of lots of these different structures. And what these structures are, they're a bit like our retina, they have a bit more, so each of these has, each of these separate ones has a, its own uh, cornea. So it has a cornea, it has a crystalline cone, which kind of acts like its lens. It has no specific lens, but it has one of these cones, and, and the cornea is a bit different as well. But then light passes through in each of these martidium. You can imagine this happens 10,000 times. And each one of these will produce one picture, right? So just one small not one, won't produce one small picture, but it will produce a small section of a picture. Right, so if you look, if a fly sees something, one of these will produce one part, another one will produce another part, and basically they all come together to form one image. So you need to have all, have all these 10,000 omatium activated to be able to actually see the full picture, because each part only makes a small part of that picture. So that's how it's different to the mammalian eye. Mammalian eye, we've got it all concentrated on a specific point, Whereas in the actual fly eye, or the insect eye, each of these makes its own part of the picture, and they all come together to form the full picture. Right, so how is it different? First of all, again, we have 10,000 omatiums in a actual um, fly eye, whereas we have millions of retina and we've got millions of retina and cones in the mammalian eye. So that's different as well. Retina and cones in the mammalian eye, whereas we have these millions of them, whereas we only have 10,000 omatiums in the actual eye of a fly. That's important because whilst they can see color, like mammals can, they have less visual acuity. Visual acuity means how clearly you can see things, right? You can imagine, if we've got millions of cones, right? We have millions of these cones and these retina, whereas they only have 10,000 omatiums, then whilst they can see an image, we can see them much more clearly because we've got more retina and cones, whereas they only have 10,000. It's a big difference. So they can see color vision, but we can see everything more clearly. We have a more clear picture in our mind. That's a difference as well. Now, important is one of the benefits of having this eye that they have is it has something called, it's not it's images per second. I'm just gonna, saying frames per second here, but they do about 200 images per second, right? Whereas we do about 50. So human eyes do about 50 uh, images per second. Whereas the fly eye would do about 200, for example. Now, if you remember this cycle that we talked about, we've got rhodopsin, which the light energy um, breaks apart. That produces this um, cascade, is these events. 
then we have the chemical signal being sent to the brain for interpretation, and then it gets recycled, right? So we get it, we bring it back, that's the point. We recycle our adoption, and this recycling is what allows it to be reused again. Right? So in the human eye, we recycle it fast enough to do about 50 frames per second. It takes some time to recycle, but we can do about 50. But in the actual fly eye, or an insect eye, it happens a lot faster. Uh, this whole event happens a lot faster, which is why they have 200 frames per second. But the good thing with that is because it happens so fast, they can really easily detect movement. Right? So movement is something that they can easily detect. If you try to squish a fly, it's going to be quite hard because these flies, they can sense you coming really quickly because their eyes move so fast. Their eyes work so fast. That's one of the really benefits of having their kind of vision. They can't see as clearly as we can, but they can see things really fast. Before we, we would not be able to ourselves detect that our hand moving as fast as they can because they have these 200 images per second as opposed to our 50 images per second. That was because they recycle their, their um, photoopsins and rhodopsins faster or their, their, their pigments faster. And they also can't focus a lens, right? We can focus our lens. We've got accommodation to make sure we can see near and, and far. They have just one type of lens. They can't, they, they have their crystalline cone and their corneal lens, and they can't change the shape of that. So our, our refractive media is a bit different to their refractive media. That was, again, a difference between us and them. Um, so I'll quickly go over the point again. So we need to compare a mammal to an insect and a, um, a other animal. I took the worm. So we've got trichromatic vision. We have refractive media, the cornea, the aqueous lens, the vitreous humor. We have ret we have retinas, millions of them, and they allow us to see color vision. And this is the shape of our normal eye. We've got the that was a primate eye, right? So the an example of a mammal, a primate, such as a chimps. And planarians, which is an example of a worm, they have got the ocelli. Ocelli is a very simple kind of eye. It just detects light, doesn't give you any image. It has very little refractive media, doesn't have color vision. But yeah, all it sees is if light, if light is coming from somewhere, it'll detect the light, but it won't be getting any images of that. And then we have the fly eye, which is the example of an insect eye that has, it's called a compound eye because it's made up of lots of these omatiums of the 10,000 per eye, so obviously it has two eyes. Uh, it has color vision, but less visual acuity. The reason why is because it only has 10,000 omatium as opposed to our millions of retina and cones. It can see about 200 images per second because of its fast recycling of the pigments, which means it can really detect movement really quickly, whereas we can't because we only have 50 images per second. We can still see it quite, clear, quite fast, but not as fast as the fly can. It doesn't have a focusable lens because it does not have any mechanism to change the shape of the lens, whereas we do. And those are some of the differences between us and the actual insect and worm. Hope that was useful.